Okay, this session is looking at giving the king company, the theme behind giving the king, giving the king company. Um, based on my research, um, I do like the playing style of Tiger Hill at person, and I don't want to replicate it because he does play um, the sort of Fianchetto type line um, a lot more than I would, but he uses it appropriately. It's an active use of the Fianchetto line. So the whole idea behind this session really is to look at where we're getting the giving the king company um, principles from, just for our own mantra and our own usage. So basically, we'll just take a look at this game. We're not going to look at individual moves. We're going to look at the theme that is being presented to us um, actually on the board. So you can go through it very quickly just to understand the principle of giving the king company, your king company. And it could be the smallest of details, but um, have a look at the way that Tiger is just positioning his pieces. His king has got company with his pieces. We're not looking at breaking down the individual moves. We're just looking at the position that they are getting on the board. So almost every piece is like just giving the king a little bit of company throughout the game. So as they further develop, then they can look to expand and then start attacking. So the general theme was right from the very beginning, giving the king company, making sure that it's safe. So then you can go out and expand and potentially then go and attack the opponent's king or weaker pieces. Just having a look at another game of um, Tiger Hill at Persons. And again, looking at giving the king company. And it uh, looks like it's reconnecting this uh, lighters. So again, don't need to break down the actual moves. We're just looking at the pattern on the board of giving the king company throughout the game. So as you can see, the pieces are around his king area in the outset of the game. And then as the game develops, they start to expand and start attacking the opponent's king. Okay, another game of Tiger Hill at Persons, playing as black. And just taking a look at giving the king company. Simple concept, just a general theme, just flicking through the moves as we do. But just taking a look at where his pieces are. As you can see, the pieces are near the king, close to their king. Giving it support, giving it the company that it needs. So in order for them to develop further in the game. And they're still around their king area. They've not gone too far away from the king at all. So it's a small little lesson, but it's I think it's an important lesson. Giving the king company. And as you can see, then they can take advantage of the weak areas around the opponent's king because they're not necessarily supported and they didn't give their king any company. Okay, Tiger Hill at person again. And just taking a look at playing as white this time. Again, the theme is looking at giving the king company. So as you can see, they've got the king with the company got the pieces near the king start developing the pieces out so at any given moment once the opportunity is free and available then obviously they can expand to attack always very mindful of giving the king company just noticing the smallest of details pieces are around the king area they're not too far from the king at all giving the appropriate support for the king so the king can jostle into a better position on the board okay and the last one in the tiger hill at person series just giving the um king company so just taking a look again just at the the pattern formation so the king has got company with the pieces the pieces aren't too far away from the king they're still giving it that important company so now they can expand and attack the opponent Continuing the giving the king um, company, I'm now going to look at Bent Larson. Um, I do not like Bent Larson's style whatsoever, but what I have learned from him is that giving the king company has a different interpretation as well, because in terms of looking at your king, 
Is your king actually saying to you, hey, I'm okay, get out there, go on, go on battle, I'm safe, I'm cool, they can't hurt, they can't hurt me. That's kind of Bent Larson style. I've done a lot of research on Bent Larson. Um, that's why I can say I don't really like his style, but I can understand how he plays like that. Yeah. So basically he's saying, my king is safe. I've got enough company. The opponent can't get me. My team, go out there and do the battle. I'll show you what I mean. And it's a, it's a good thing to bring into, you know, it's in our mantra already, you know, it's just making sure that your king is safe as best possible and knowing that your king is safe and more advanced thinking and confidence to say, well, I don't need to move my king. You guys can go out there. I'm covered. So let's take a look at what I'm trying to explain. Not looking at individual moves. We're looking at the look and feel of what is actually happening on the board. And as you can see, the difference between Tiger Hill at Person's um, conceptual idea is, you know, he likes to have his pieces around his king, you know, basically protecting the king area, giving it some company. Whereas Bent Larson is happy just leaving his king in the corner. But what he's saying is, I'm safe. I'm cool. You guys go out and do the battle. Fight the good fight. As you can see, no piece is running to help the king now. They're actually getting activated and going in and fighting the good fight. And the king is there by itself, but it's covered. So basically, that's what it's saying. I'm covered. You guys don't need to worry about me. If you worry about me too much, um, you're not going to get in the fight and the opponent's going to win. So you're getting some important tempo by actually driving forward. So... Subliminally, you could say, well, the pieces were around the king. They were giving it company enough for the king to feel confident. And it looks slightly different to Tiger Hill at Persons, which was more of a tighter company of pieces around his king, whereas Bent Larson's is a looser type of company. So that is the difference between the, the two. If you have the confidence to say, well, okay, my king is okay. Let's go out there and fight the good fight. We don't need to tightly support the king. Then all well and good. Or you can go with the Tiger Hill at person type idea of um, being a little bit closer to the king and, and working your pieces tightly together. And so there's, those are the differences. But at the end of the day, it's really about giving the king appropriate uh, company to make sure that it is safe. And if it's confident enough to say, well, the opponent can't touch me, then go and fight the good fight. Okay, just um, doing another white for Bent Larson, just to you know show the consistency of the style of play that he had um, when looking at the giving the king company type situation. So again, let's quickly just breeze through the position king's not bothered castling at all just totally wiped out all the rook situation uh, this looks very dangerous to a normal <laughs> a normal beginner chess player type situation but this is like a brilliant extreme that we're trying to show here that um, given the king company it doesn't have to be a tight tight situation um, so long as the king is happy and it's saying look they can't actually touch me so you can go out there and just get activated. So, castled on the queen side. So, all that tempo win gave him an advantageous position on the board. And Black resigned at that point. So, he didn't lose any tempo at all in terms of losing the rook or anything like that. His king was safe and his pieces were very active. So, the opponent had constantly had to think about what it is that I they need to do to respond to um, his attacks. Okay, let's practice the giving the king the company. The company that it deserves, that it's saying it needs, rather than just naturally going for it. Let's just bring the bishop here, just play our usual game. See if we can blend the two extreme concepts, the kind of 
protecting the king Gary, giving it some company and also allowing the king to say, well, I'm okay, carry on, fight the good fight. Let's castle. And as we know, this castle is not the best thing in the world. We've got to give the king some company. We're actually going to bring the bishop here and bait the pawn. Let's bring this bishop here. It's obviously going to be baiting this pawn, but it's locking himself in if he does drop that pawn. So it's going for the bishop. I'm going to take it off the ball, keep it simple. And now I'm going to try and give my king some company and bring my knight across to the other side of the ball. Let's take this off. Let's put a check on the king if he takes with that one, but he doesn't. Let's bring the bishop here. So now the focal point is on giving the king some company now. Let's just bring the knight across. Always for the B pawn. Oh, they're really going for simplification. Do we have to take? No, we don't really have to take. I think just bringing the rook here, attacking their knight. Let's take with the queen. Okay, so they're doing a bit of a dance. They're looking to protect this area. So we're going to simply go for doubling the rooks on the file. Just continue with that. Just capture. So it feels like it's pre turning out to be some type of draw. Always for the B pawn. So we're just ready to push this pawn. King's got company. Probably need to give it a little bit of air. Okay, so he's moved the king. I'm a bit shocked at that. He's moved the king. So what do we want to do? Just put a bit of a check on the king. Just let him know that we're in the game. Could swing back. Got free. Oh, going for an ex Oh, that's a damn shame. But yeah, that's a damn shame. Let's take the queen off the board. And they've resigned. Let's practice this. Um, giving the king some company. Nice and steady. Four knights. Let's x-ray through to the queen. Let's open the dark square bishop. Let's just bring the bishop maybe to here. Long term, long term. Shall we take? Let's castle into the breeze. So just because we castle doesn't mean it is safe. It does need to have company. So smaller piece attacking the higher piece just to see what it wants to do. And again, smaller piece attacking the higher piece. And we could keep on harassing the bishop. So I'm going to just attack the bishop. Doesn't really have anywhere to go. So we're going to take. So we could keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Or give the king some company. Knight's already here. You know they have sights of getting the bishop diagonal somehow. Quick queen across here. So we could hit this pawn first. Takes, bishop takes, just to free up some space for the queen. I think that's what we're going to do. Doesn't have to take, we'll just keep pushing up. Does take, so free up some space for the queen maybe. Um, okay, just have to bring the bishop back, but maybe bring the bishop back here and then free space for the queen. We do know that they're going to be jumping down here. Oh, it's moved there quick. So he's obviously looking for this spot for his knight. So free the space for the queen. As we know, this pawn is going to be falling because they want the searching for this type of thing. 
that quick and dirty type situation. We can simply move the king, that type of stuff. But we've got pieces around our king. We're feeling comfort. Oops, see Daisy. Let's take the queen off the board. So they're probably going to replicate with the rook somehow. Try to get the rook down or whatever. Trying still to focus on this aspect. Could bring the knight up. It's not really attacking anything at the minute. This knight is wanting to come here to attack the bishop. So we know this. So do we just move the bishop out of the way? Because we know that attack's coming anyway. Attacking the pawn. Let's do that. Pawn simply pushes. Let's move it out of the... Oh, the rook has come down. Could doubly attack it. Then it drops. Then the knight can go here. And then does the bishop get blocked somehow? Knight comes here, looking to come here, but the knight is there. So this pawn can push onto the knight. But then are we free in space if he goes here? So we're looking to go here to get their bishop off the ball. It's not a very good bishop though, so would I really want to be taking that off the board? Alright, so we could go here. And it's doubly attacking the pawn that way. Let's go this way. Same idea, but we're not going for this because it's a bad bishop. I don't really want to go for the bad bishop. It's already jammed in as it is. So it drops, now it can still go here, and we could still go there after we've pushed this pawn on. I don't know, it all depends what they do. Oh, so he's um, doubled up his defence. He's doubled up the defence, and uh, can't go here, the bishop's protecting. What do we want to do? It feels like there's something beneficial for us, but we... We're kind of struggling with this situation, aren't we? We're kind of struggling with that situation. If we pushed here, we're going to push here and see if we can get that. Okay. And I suppose, in a way, it just drops down, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we go here and then it just drops here. What about if we do this? It still does the same thing. Let's go here. Because then at least we'll get an exchange of the rooks if it does push down. So now my king's got no company. But it feels like it's got company because there's nothing that can actually get to it oh that's gonna hurt isn't it let's hit so we'll get the exchange of the rooks the king is looking a bit airy but we can't get to it yet rook rover time situation now it's got this spot ah oh no maybe has he got anything he's got the pawn here so if we bring the rook up making it look like we're defending but we're snapping in here Getting excited, but there's no mate threats or anything. Because he can just go there. When really, we could be going here with the knight and coming back around again. So he's taken the pawn. So should we do this first, the knight up? But then he takes the bishop. Or do we just take the knight off the board and his pawn takes? Going for the check. Going for the checks first. Knight still protecting the bishop. Our king is airy, but we can move up. All right, so there's no checkmate per se with this position. Knight's got the pawn. And then jump in here, but his knight is protecting everything. So I'm actually just going to take that off the board. He's got our pawn here, but the rook is defending. So we can take this pawn, protecting these pawns here. Uh, is there any other magic coming here? Obviously, he can go here because we'd be looking to go here. 
So if we did go there, so if we go up, looking to put a check on to get the bishop off the board, he comes down. Yeah, so we won't get a chance to go up. Well, he goes down. Comes for the knight. So we go one. He goes here. We go up still. He could move the bishop. He could move the bishop. We come back, put a check on the king. That would be a bit annoying for him though. I don't think he'll move the bishop. I think he'll take the knight. Rook takes. Starts pushing the pawn. Takes, takes. He's got a pass pawn here. <sighs> I don't think that's going to work for me. I think I'm going to have to take this pawn. I'm going to take this pawn. So looking backwards, I think we'll struggle. If we oh, it's actually gone there. So if we put the check on, he comes and attacks. Yeah, so we're not going to put the check on. We can attack the bishop again. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Then the rook bishop comes down. He's in a better position. All supported, and it no it actually defends the pawn here. Actually defends the pawn, and then the knight stuck there can't move anywhere. No, that's not a good move. That's not a good move. So we could go up and then push the pawn, attack his rook. But uh, I'm going to have to move the knight. And then he's got the pawns. He's got my pawn here and all these pawns are coming down. Oh, 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 oh. That's not a pretty sight, dude. Mm-mm-mm. That's not a pretty sight. Okay, let's bring it back. These pawns are going. Let's see, what can we do? We have to do a whole heap of shifting around and we're going to be too late. Yeah, it's uh, coming down. It's coming across for the pawns. have to go here it's coming across here it's not going across just yet let's go here just hide in this little snooky like I said just hide in the little snooky here oh, I was going for these pawns really but we'll hopefully fingers crossed they don't and then we can Maybe make something of something. Attack the rook, but he takes the pawn. Ah, okay, what's the knight doing? Knight must have some magic in this type of situation. When it all gets a little bit... Knight up, knight check. No, okay. Knight up, attacking the pawn. What is he doing? Knight up attacking the pawn. I've got two minutes. Gotta move a bit quicker, quicker, quicker. So he must come back for these pawns now. Well, this pawn. Because that's his passer. Oh, interesting times. I can't take. Can't take. Gonna have to move. What is he doing? Come back down to stop the pawn. Imagine this pawn is stopping the pawn, isn't it? Let's take. What is he doing? He's defending the pawn with the rook. Can you believe it? Um, let's go here. Come on, knights, you've got to be able to do something. 
although I'm trapped, you know, it looks like I can't really move anywhere. I can't go here, I can't go there. If I go here, then I can come back, well, I'll come back this way. But then that's it, it's kind of trapped. Ooh, that's going to hurt. Let's bring this around here, get a checkmate of some sort. Yeah, having a joke, aren't you? Oh, dear me, this is going to hurt. I can't go there because he'll just go here and then he's got both in pieces. I'm going to have to go here with a check on the king and get the rook off the board. Ouch, that has got to hurt. Oh, lovely. Damn, that was tense. 